Last week, you may have remembered, we're still working out my thyroid medication. I was having very exhaustive, super exhaustive problems with that. That was on the downswing. Then on Friday, I walked five miles. Okay. I don't know why. All of a sudden, out of fucking nowhere, I'm like, I'm just going to keep walking around the mall. I'm going to keep walking. I'm still walking. For I just five running. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> forest go night. Right? Five. Oh, banging the microphone. Five F miles out of nowhere. This is scary. It's it's like, oh, that's good. That's so that's healthy. It's like, no, it's not. I don't know why I did it. So your thyroid meds have kind of made you bipolar? A little. We're like, I'm very, very tired and a little depressed. Let's go, 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 go. Kinda. Which is the I'm not sure they're supposed to do that. That's the scary part. Hormones are scary ish. It's like I you you kind of accept on some level, even though if you don't engage with it very much, that we are meat. We we we're 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 not just in we kind of consider ourselves like we're inside here. We're just hanging out in here. We're in, yeah, but no no, you really are the meat because something like this happens. It doesn't like, like does that ever keep you up at night thinking about that? Like <laughs> Am I, is my identity the, the meat sack run on electricity and chemicals, or is my identity the psychology created by the electricity and sack of fat? Is there a such thing as a soul? Does it really weigh 21 grams? Like, the sleep I have lost. And this and this is why this is something like this. Just like somebody just it was, it's like we just pushed a button. That's what we were doing, except it's not just one of those little buttons. We were like deep into control panel and windows. We're screwing the around with the drivers. Candy like button. We're like we're, we're like we deleted some DLL files and now things have gotten all weird. That's 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 kind of it. it that that messes with you. It's like. This is really all it takes. Yeah. Holy. What's that coming to go? Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong Crazy. With You? We haven't, I'm in a very long time, had a so great lonely. moment in stupid history. It's been a while. I think the last one we talked about was the Hunley, which still gives me the giggles. The 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 Confederate submarine that killed more Confederate soldiers than it did you. Yeah. <laughs> um but then Sarah noticed this other thing that she that, that showed up in the in the paper not long ago. Um, because it's 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 now it, it's been brought back up. I didn't know this. And now that I do. This is fucking with me. <laughs> it's been brought back up because it's a matter of uh, they're, they're trying to decide if it's a historic site or not and what they're going to do with it. But, and I know Tara's like, give me the link, give me the link. Some of you may be aware this happened. Some of you may not. I was not, and I live here. Because apparently in 1958... They almost nuked South Carolina. So here's what happened. The saga began on a spring day in 1958. The afternoon of March 11th, a gleaming B-47 bomber jetted off from Savannah on its way to England. On board was a nuclear weapon twice as powerful as the bomb that devastated Hiroshima, enough to wipe out the small city of Florence and sicken the entire county. Thankfully, it was unarmed, but the TNT stored inside the bomb was still enough to do serious damage. 
it's unclear. I love how they phrase this. It's unclear how exactly the military managed to drop a bomb on unsuspecting South Carolinians living in Mars Bluff, a rural community outside of Florence. The military's attempt to bury the accident have clouded the story. Research done by Florence County Museum suggests the trouble started soon after takeoff. The plane's captain looked down to see a red light flash on, indicating the bomb wasn't properly secured. The bombardier went back to sea. Struggling to check the locking mechanism, the bombardier reached up, grabbed hold of the plane's ceiling, and heaved himself upward. What the bombardier had grabbed was the emergency release lever. The bomb crashed down, breaking through the Bombay doors and plummeting 15,000 feet toward the earth. And that crater there, you can see, because I don't know if, how many of you actually understand how a, a nuclear bomb works, or at least how they used to. They were very, they were kind of primitive back in the day. The, 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 there is a, there's a load of ex conventional explosives as part of a, a nuclear bomb. Maybe you know this if you saw Oppenheimer. Those conventional, I don't know, I haven't seen Oppenheimer yet, so I don't know. Those conventional explosions are what actually kick off the splitting of the atom, the, the, the rest of the, the you know, nuclear reaction. This could have been so fucking bad. Like, we're talking a 1950s nuclear weapon. We hadn't even invented the calculator yet, okay? Wait, really? It's 58. Yeah, I don't think that. We had the nuclear bomb before the calculator? Yeah, little Texas Instrument, little po okay, pocket calculator, I should say, but still. Okay, because I was like, those, th they did all that fucking math by hand? Well, they had, like, I guess they had the, th 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 the cranking ones with the sheet that pulls out the back. I mean, I guess that makes sense, because living figures, like, they had a bunch of black women in a room doing yeah. all that stuff and never gave them any credit for it. It's so there was every possibility that an unarmed nuclear bomb could have still gone off. We hadn't quite figured out transistors as of this time yet. So it, it was. And now there is a th th there's there is a giant ass crater and just there. The, you can see the people there for scale as to how big that crater is. The crater's still there, and they're trying to decide if they're going to make it a historic site or not. So, wait. The bomb fell, but didn't detonate? No, the nuke part didn't go off. The TNT, the conventional explosives, did. So there was just some fucking plutonium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sitting there. U2 or uranium. Because the article says uranium that it fell, fell on a six-year-old girl's playhouse. Yep. Which is like, god damn. They were really fucking serious. So that was just some fucking weapon-grade plutonium they sitting were, in your tea set. They were really fucking serious about commies back then. We're here, this little girl's giving out tea for free to all her dollies. That's communism. Uh, yeah, that could, this could, there have been over the course of American history, ever since we got the nuclear bomb, there have been teeny tiny little accidents that somehow did not result in fucking like Jimmy Cart. This is a weird human, human extinction. This is a weird one. You can look this one up. Jimmy fucking Carter, the president, Jimmy Carter, before he was president, was responsible for stopping a nuclear incident in Canada when he was still a technician. Crazy shit. So, yeah. The way in which we have underappreciated Jimmy Carter are fucking legion. So yeah, this could have, it's all because one guy was like, Eh, eh. Oh wait, whoops. That was literally a whoops. A fucking like hopefully we've made that handle a little <laughs> less accessible now. Hopefully we've made it so that there's a grab handle mm. and the release the fucking bomb handle isn't next to it and or easy to pull because <laughs> holy shit. Can you just imagine that guy stand the bombardier standing there? The pilot's like, did you fix it? 
Um, is the lights gone off? Is everything okay back there? No. Um, <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> Like, we could have just accidentally blown South Carolina off the map. Yeah, and I live here and I didn't know this. This is enough. This keeps you fucking up at night and shit. Smith remembers the alarm that rippled through South Carolina when an atomic bomb landed on a farm in the rural PD. Is that PD. the name of yeah. the place? Yeah, it's the rural PD. Yeah. P spelled like urine. Yes, spelled like urine. PD. Yes. There's also a place here named Round O. Okay. I don't even pretend it. Just we just sort of we we just go with it. But also, point. just they managed to cover this up. Well, the the how it happened. The mil you got to understand it was the fifties and the sixties, and the military could pretty much say, hey, "Go fuck yourself," and you went and fucked yourself. And everybody wasn't able to live stream it. Can you imagine if that should happen now? <sighs> All right. Well, moving on to some more modern stupidity. This is from Alabama. And um, this is probably one of the dumbest crimes to also result in trying to escape from law enforcement by going on the lam. Alabama woman arrested for stealing flowers from graves. Yes. The Cab County, Alabama, the Cab County Sheriff's Office. Oh, that's a lot. Uh, arrested a F Alabama woman for stealing floral arrangements from graves. Authorities arrested 69 year old Martha Jane Bowes of Valley Head, Alabama. They're charging her with theft of property for a uh, fourth. Class, I guess, and destruction of a gravesite or desecration. Sorry, not destruction, desecration. Sheriff's Office first received reports of gravesite theft at Painter Cemetery uh, on Thursday, May 16th. They say the victim faced a theft uh, from the gravesite before and installed cameras to catch the person responsible. Thursday morning, the cameras caught Bose stealing two sets of handmade floral arrangements from a headstone. Now, just already, just starting off. This is horrific. Why on God's green earth? I know people. I'm caught on. I would never, ever put a fucking camera in a graveyard. <laughs> is there is shit I don't want to catch on camera or find out. <laughs> I mean, Tara, all you're going to see is a bunch of possums doing silly shit. That's about it. I've read a lot of Neil Gaiman. I'm never putting a camera in a graveyard. So already we're starting off with a crime that is so fucking stupid. Why in God's green earth would you do this? I mean, was she going to resell them? God, God only knows. Because there's a lot. Secondhand florist or some shit. Uh, now, here's the thing. My, the cemetery where my parents are buried... It's a little mm -hmm. Catholic cemetery on Long Island. And uh, first of all, you can only plant certain things at the graves. And if you plant things that are not approved, they will just rip your fucking plants out and throw them away. Yeah. It's the same with floral arrangements, though. Like, even if they're still alive after like a week, they just take them and throw them away anyway. So... On the one hand, yeah, that's a really shitty thing to do. On the other, the cemeteries are doing the same shitty thing. But. But they're not going to jail for it. But. Investigators spoke with Bose on Saturday, and she said she was in Mississippi. She told them she would not be back in DeKalb County until the following Wednesday. Investigators learned that Bose was currently in Fort Payne, Alabama, and not in Mississippi, as she previously stated. So she tried. To evade law enforcement <laughs> with a cunning ruse. No, I'm sorry. I'm not home right now. She faces two additional charges of failing to appear from outstanding warrants. See, 
if if they they sometimes they're nice and say we need you to come in yeah if you're not like a threat to the community we, we need you to come in and normally most people are like okay she's like no i'm not in the state right now which at that point now it's more crime it's these are more crimes all because you were stealing flowers off graves and didn't think you were get yeah. caught you thought you had the perfect yeah. fucking crime yeah because honestly like if i put flowers on a grave and they disappeared i would assume the cemetery threw them away true It's just so many flowers. It's so many. That's an entire table full, right? She's, like, I think you're right. She's trying like, to resell them. It's either them. a compulsive thing or she was going to resell them. Yeah. Because they look relatively fresh, too. So that's a lot. Yeah. <sighs> Which probably means, and this does suck, that she was stealing them probably off pretty fresh graves. Ooh, yeah. Because in my experience... My experience is limited, but most people don't buy like really elaborate standing yeah. arrangements. Yeah. Just to put on grandma's 50 year old grave. Yeah. That's... You get the really big, expensive ones for a funeral. I think that's which probably means they why we're still. Yeah. I think this is probably why this is such a big deal. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Next one. This, this fucking guy. I don't understand. There's a lot of this week of I don't understand this story. I don't know what's going on. Why is this happening? This is so stupid. Make it make sense. And it's not going to make sense. <sighs> Campbell man arrested for elder abuse, punched victim, then stopped to pose for picture. What? 25 year old Campbell man was arrested on two counts of elder abuse for incidents that happened this month. On May 4th, Nicholas Hostetter, allegedly punched a man in the stomach on San Tomas Aquino Road. San, San, San Tomas Aquino? Okay. Um, San Tomas Aquino. Aquino, thank you. He quickly took off, but then paused for a casual photo taken by his victim. So probably what happened was he punched the guy, and then the guy he punched is like, I've got to get a picture of the dude who did it. And what a, he's fucking posing here. He's like, like a fucking menswear model. Like he's in a jail, like he's a fucking JC Penny catalog. What the fuck happened? Did you think the person who you punched in the face? was taking your picture because they thought you were cool because they liked your outfit hey 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 hang on let me let me let me get the blood off my nose but i actually do a style blog <laughs> in an additional incident on friday uh police said they responded to a similar battery in the area of, Dr of drive and elam avenues police said they learned that two hours prior a 74 year 75 year old man was randomly punched in the face while taking a walk when the victim and his family returned to the area to look for surveillance cameras, they encountered the suspect again, who attempted to fight the family before leaving. Officers began to search the area of the suspect immediately. Um, oh, look at his fucking face, too. Look at the it's fucking punchable. smug look it's on punch, his fucking he is face. So punchable. So punchable. Um, Hostetter's parents. Especially in that fucking sweater. You don't get to be that smug wearing that fucking sweater from the Gap, okay? Was that his parents were contacted by police Saturday morning. Police said with their assistance, Hostetter exited his res residence and was arrested. They went and got his mommy. <laughs> they could, the cops called his mom. <laughs> Probably call, still lives with her. They called his mommy on him. <laughs> Just what, what a fucking asshole. What in the fuck? Why? First of all, why are you just running around punching old people? And trying to fight their whole family? What the fuck are you doing? This is like some... Like, listen, <sighs> I understand that the younger generations have some issues with boomers. I don't blame you. <laughs> 
this isn't the fucking answer. You don't just run around punching old people. This is like a bad karma Fallout 3 run is what this is like. Just run around, punch people in the face, see who's an essential NPC and who isn't. And then stopping to do blue steel. Right? In your (laughs) ugly ass blue sweater. He's even smiling. The smug shit. He's fucking posing. Honey, your outfit is not good enough for you to be posing. What happened here? Maybe if it was 1996, that outfit would be worth posing. Like, he pretty much got fucking, I, what? Anyway, let's go to Korea. We, We have made jokes. On the internets, on, on, on the Twitters, a lot on the blue sky about people wanting to fuck their cars, to fuck their Teslas in particular, just because, you know, the cyber truck and all that shit. Um, it's not a joke anymore. Korean man spotted having sex with a pink Tesla. Man, I was going to paint my little Jeep pink, but a Tesla. In a disturbing incident that has left many people shocked, a man was caught engaging in inappropriate behavior with somebody's pink Tesla. Incident took place at May 18th, the Hyundai department store in Isan. According to the victim's husband, his wife witnessed the man kissing and touching her car for three hours. Now you at least have to respect the foreplay game there. Cause if it was with a human, but, be- but it's with a car before fleeing. When she approached to get in the vehicle, the guy kissed my wife's car, fingered it for three hours and ran off. When my wife approached the car, what are you fingering on a Tesla? There's no exhaust. Like, that's the thing. There's, there's no hole. There's no obvious hole. What are you going to fuck? Yeah, there, there's not even like a radiator, is there? It's not even, yeah, not even. No. It, it's built completely different. But wait, the disturbing incident falls as follows a similar one that occurred just weeks earlier in late March. In that case, a different man was observed engaging in sexual activity with a white Audi. Recorded footage exposed the man on top of the car's hood. <laughs> they have a picture. Oh my God. Oh my God, they do. Uh, rubbing himself against it before doing the same to the car's front fender. What? What is look, I know we all know by now that the men are not okay. <laughs> That's kind it's of an obvious. Understatement. The men are not okay, like in general. But I didn't realize y'all were this level of not okay. Fucking hell, what? Like, will you really do anything but get therapy? Right? Because th- and, and that's the thing. It's not your own car. If it was, listen, listen, if it's your own car. They're fucking cars, if, lads. If it's your own car in your own fucking garage on your own property, that's fine. It's not great, but it's legal. You were, you were not involving anybody else. I would still recommend therapy. Yes, but it's, it, it's just, it steps up when you're like, that's somebody else's car. Like it's, it's still pink. And I am trying to picture the Venn diagram of like, wants to fuck a Tesla because you worship Elon Musk. And well, they did paint it pink. So it's a girl. <laughs> that's how transformers were, right? No, it's, it's, it's the car's pink, but if you shine a black light over it, there's probably splotches now. You know? What the fuck? Korea, what the fuck is going on, man? I don't understand. 
We've got more I don't understand, and I'm a little bit mad about this. Just, just on general principle. <sighs> it's from Louisville, Kentucky. Man ordered to stay away from Krispy Kreme after suspected arson fire. Man okay. accused, a man accused of setting a Louisville Krispy Kreme on fire was in court on Wednesday. Michael Moore, 40, is charged with felony ar arson and wanted in danger. I assume not the documentarian. Not the documentarian, no. <laughs> that would be fascinating. He's accused of throwing an incendiary device on the roof of the store uh, on Bardstown Road around noon on Tuesday. The fire reportedly began after Moore attempted to set a menu on fire inside the shop, but failed. Officials said he then moved outside, lit a bottle on fire, and aimed it at the drive through window. The bottle bounced off, and the suspect then threw it on the roof. You had to try three times? Yeah. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Fire officials say the building has significant damage. Police said there is surveillance video of the incident. Judge set Moore's bond at 100,000 cash, who's also ordered not to have any contact with the store or its employees. What I want to know is why. There's nothing in this yeah, story. Yeah, we don't have anything on a motive here. Why did you light the Krispy Kreme on fire? I mean, I, too, prefer Duncan. <laughs> But this seems extreme. It's it, the and the most I love. Actually, my favorite is Voodoo Donut, but those are like four dollars each. I love that he took the most primitive means of doing this by lighting a plastic bottle on fire. That shit will burn. Not well, and you're breathing some terrible I mean, shit. That's what the Krispy Kremes are coated in, right? Just <laughs> melted soda bottles. what it seems like to me just, just, it, it's it's and there's another there was another story because I, I went and i looked more and i was like why did this happen so i looked for more information there was another article that's about how this is the only donut shop in this entire little area this tiny little little area that there's not another one in range and people were so sad that the Krispy Kreme was burned down because now they can't get donuts in the morning and yet still in there, and also he's on video doing this, and yet he pled not guilty. Wasn't me. And we okay, Shaggy. We have no fucking idea why. <laughs> like, this, this is a big, this, this is the kind of thing that you just, you know you're getting in trouble for. You're... How did you think this was going to be like? I mean, it's a, if it's the only donut shop in town, guess what it's full of? Apparently not at this particular moment. <sighs> Why? Why would you do that? Why would you burn down the Krispy Kreme? Yeah. Just get up one morning. You're like, you know what? I fucking hate donuts. Fucking hate them. the living shit is wrong with you now it had now you are on record in court the judge had to say stay away from the Krispy Kreme that's in a court record <laughs> in regards to you they had to yeah that's in writing that's on your permanent record we have a final one this and this is another why none of this makes any goddamn sense from Lancaster, New Hampshire. Lancaster man accused of trashing store returning to drive through front doors. Lancaster man was arrested twice within three hours, accused of damaging a store in town and then driving a car through the building's front doors. Police said surveillance video shows Richard Ruddy, 35, and do we have the picture of him? Because Let's see. Do we have that? Uh, this business. Let's see. Do we have the the, the mug shot? Because the mug shot was ridiculous. Do we have it? No, we don't have the mug shot. 
give me the mugshot. Well, there, there. Oh, we have video of him trashing it. There we go. Let's just, let's just, there, there's his mugshot. Big old grin. What? He's very pleased about this. Not sure what caused him to have the reaction he did. Anything he could grab, he was throwing. He made a very large mess. I'll just, just put the mess in the background, I guess. There he is. Um. Oh, he doesn't like the COVID shield. Police uh, arrived five minutes after the clerk's, clerk pressed a panic button. Police said Ruddy threw a carton of cigarettes at an officer. But he was then arrested and charged with criminal mischief. Um. Ruddy was released on bail with specific conditions that he not return to the Big Apple store. Now, to be fair enough, he hasn't actually hurt anyone. Is it, this is a minor mischief misdemeanor kind of bullshit. Has like, like under a thousand dollars worth of damage and whatnot. So yeah, bail makes sense. But police say after Ruddy was released Thursday night, he returned to the store. Police spotted him near the gas pumps. And when they approached, he drove through the doors of the store. So you're already been arrested. The cops are so right. This is the criminal mischief version of, and another thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last word. <laughs> Although I don't even know if this was an argument. Yeah. This, this is just, why in the fucking, all right. Like, I love the fact that he's like, he sees the police. So instead of driving away, to try to get away, not because if he see, they told him not to go back. Instead of driving away, he drives in two. I, I, I don't. What the fuck? What the fuck? It's not. And it doesn't let. Yeah, like the video, like he's just talking to the clerk. It looks like he's paying for a coffee. And all of a sudden he just throws the coffee and starts throwing shit. Oh, we I we, I think we have video here of the car going through it. Where is it? Where is it? Let's see. Let's see. Show me that. There we go. Hey. Whoa. Like you can get laxatives without a prescription. <laughs> you don't have to live like this. Why in the name of fuck? Which, what's baffling me is we don't know why he did it. And we don't know why he escalated to literally grand that's not what, what's the damage version of grand theft it's not it, it's it's destruction of property it, yeah destruction of property in excess of a certain amount now it's a felony why did you why i'm just picturing i'm picturing the biggie mark clerk from gross point blank no i'm not okay hurt pissed i gotta find a new job <laughs> because you can see the guy behind the counter he just backs off and he's like i i don't need this shit Nobody working retail needs this shit. No. What in the living fuck? Especially 24-hour convenience retail. And it's, just, it's just crazy shit on parade. Apparently, this was the only 24-hour in the entire area. And he destroyed it just before Memorial Day. Why do you hate the troops? I don't, I don't, you drove, why? I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Make it make sense. Nothing. You, you. What was, was worth it? What makes this worth it? Like, Jesus. I'm very pissed off because none of this makes sense. No. And you think they could have reported on a possible motive, but they don't. They never fucking do. I'm just going to be for the rest of my when life. When I was in journalism school back in the Mesozoic era, I was taught who, what, where, when, why, how. <laughs> Apparently they're not teaching the journalists that these days. I just, I, I guess the first thing we learned this week is that once you're already out on bail, for fucking around at a place. Don't go back and up the ante. This, this is like, no. like you, you went all in on a pair of twos. What are you doing? We 
we've learned that sometimes, for absolutely no fathomable reason, a dude will set fire to the Krispy Kreme. So you're going to have to plan for that in your day. Like the next time you're like, I, I feel like I want donuts, but maybe I should check to see if someone hasn't burned it down. That's something you need to do now. I mean, this is why I just DoorDash Voodoo Donut for $30, like an idiot. We've learned that um, you can love your car, just don't love your car and especially don't love someone else's car what's going on there's not a hole that's, where's the hole that's not what auto erotica means <laughs> we've learned if you've just punched a 74 year old in the face do not pose like you're on the cover of a fucking catalog you fucking douchebag. Like, seriously. Like, is there a level? Have we reached a level of douchebag that needs to be in, like, the next DSM? It's kind of like the, the shadows on the cave there, wall platonic ideal of douchebag here. Is there, like, a chronic medical condition of douchebag now? Apparently. We've learned people will steal flowers from graveyards. And then try to, to evade law enforcement over it. No, I'm not at home. I'm um in Canada with my girlfriend. With you don't know girlfriend. her. <laughs> you you don't, don't know her. <laughs> and finally, we've learned that if someone had just been a little less lucky over half a century ago, this show wouldn't be happening right now because no. this whole state would have been an atomic wasteland. That's not even a joke. 